In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the stylization tools found in Perfect Black and White. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the Globe Pane, Film Grain Pane, Toner Pane, Vignette Pane, and Border Pane. Let's start with the Globe Pane. To turn the pane on, you're going to want to toggle the on-off switch on the top right of the pane heading. Under Glow, you'll have three options. The first is the style. As you drop down, you can select one of the blending mode styles to control your glow. So if I select Multiply, that'll give me a darker glow. Or if I apply Screen, that'll give me a brighter glow. The Amount slider controls the strength of the glow. So if I bring the Amount slider up, the glow will be stronger. The Halo controls how soft the glow is. So by bringing the Halo strength up, the glow will take on a much more ethereal feel. If you don't want to use a glow or if you want to toggle a before and after, just turn the switch off. Next is film grain. To use it, just turn the film grain pane on and then select from the wide variety of actual film scans that we created. Just select a film type that you want to simulate and the grain will be applied. The amount slider will control how much of the grain appears. So if I bring this up to 100%, the full amount of grain will appear. Size controls the actual size of that grain. So if I want more of a grain appearance, I can increase the size. If you don't want to use film grain, just turn it off. Toner allows you to create a split tone, where you can select the color of your highlights and your shadows. You can do this either by using one of the presets that we have built in over here. You can just hover over them to get a preview of what that toner preset looks like. Or you can click on the color swatches for the highlights and shadows to specify your own color. So if I want the highlights to be a bit cooler, I can drag the color swatch over to the blue and it'll take on that shape. I can do the same thing for the shadows. If I want to bring the shadows to give it more of a cross-processed look, I can do that. I can also control how strong each of the colors and the highlights and shadows are using the amount sliders. So if I want less of a blue appearance in the highlights, I can bring that down. I can do the same thing for the shadows. And if I want to skew the color balance from one side to the other, I can use the balance slider. If I bring the balance over to the left, it's going to skew it towards the shadows. And if I bring it to the right, it'll skew it towards the highlights. To stop using the toner, just switch it off. Typically, when you darken or burn the edges of your image, you're applying a vignette. To use the vignette, just turn it on, and this will help you draw the eye towards the center of the frame. First, you have the brightness. Think of the brightness as the strength of the vignette. If I bring the brightness out, you'll actually start to brighten the corners, giving it a more antique feel. If I bring the brightness down, you'll see how the corners are starting to get really dark. The size slider controls how far towards the center the vignette goes. So if I bring the size all the way to the left, the vignette's going to go much closer to the center, almost like a spotlight. And if I bring it out, it's actually going to stretch the vignette closer to the corners. The feather controls the transition from the darkest part of the vignette to the lightest part. So if I have a feather of zero, there's no transition and you'll get a hard edge. However, if I bring the feather all the way up to 100, you're going to get a very smooth and soft transition. To illustrate roundness, I'm going to bring the feather to zero. The roundness slider controls the shape of the border of the vignette. If I bring the roundness slider to the left, it becomes totally angular. However, if I bring it all the way to the right, it becomes a very, very round circular shape. You can also control how the vignette blends with your image. You can select normal, subtle, and soft. To stop using the vignette, just slide it off. As a finishing touch, you can also apply borders to your image. First, you're going to want to select the category of borders. So for here, I'm going to go to the sloppy borders. And then you can actually select one of the borders. You can also choose how that border blends by hovering over the blending modes. The opacity controls the overall strength of that border. Bringing the opacity to zero will effectively hide the border. And if you want to stretch the border closer to the edge of the frame, just increase using the size slider. You can also quickly rotate and flip your image using the rotate buttons and the flip vertical and horizontal buttons. If you want to hide your border, just click off to hide it. 